Good morning, everybody. Welcome to ACT and The Voice. My name is Crystal. I just want to thank you so much for allowing me into your homes this morning. You might be packing the kids' lunches. Or if you have no kids, you're probably thinking about, gosh, I have to face the traffic to get to work. We could be facing all sorts of things. But what is most important is that this is the day that the Lord has made. I just love the fact that we have a new day every day, a new day to start fresh, to start anew. And you're starting that day afresh and anew with me this morning, right? Um, I've heard lots of people say, doctors, medical scientists, whatever, they say that the first thing that you should do when you get up is drink a glass of water, right? Now, I don't know how many of you do that. I try to practice it. It doesn't always work out that way. Um, but it is supposed to wake up your organs, wake up your muscles, you know, tell the body that, yes, I'm up, I'm ready. Now, imagine if we were to now take a drink of the Lord first thing in the morning. Think about what it will do to your spirit. Think about what it will do to your frame of mind. Um, if, if you ask me, that is the perfect frame of mind and the position that I would want to be in to start my day. You know, I'm saying this and I know that sometimes we go through things in our life and the past sometimes tries to come up um, and affect our lives. But we have a fresh start with God every single day. I know that you might be facing some struggles, some trials. I know things are always not easy. Trust me, I know I don't live. Everything in my life is not cushy, it's not hunky-dory. And sometimes we could be tempted when a new day starts to to still think about the bad things that happened the day before. But I want to encourage you this morning to not do that. To think about God, to think about this new day as a fresh start. Think about it as a new opportunity to do new things and to accomplish His will in your life because He loves you, right? So today I want to talk a little bit, I'm sure we all know about living waters, right? There's a very good account in the Bible, which I'm going to go to right now. Um, we all know about the woman at the well. She came, you know, Jesus was by the well and she came to draw water, right? And in John 4, 10 to 12, it goes like, this is from where Jesus answered her. He says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So she had asked him, we know the account, right? She had asked him for a drink. The woman said to him, Sir, I, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? I mean, she was really curious, you know what I mean? Because for her, she come into this water all this time to pull, she come into the well, sorry, all this time to get water. And he is saying, you know, he has this living water. You don't have a pail, you don't have a bucket, you don't have nothing. How are you going to get this living water? Because she's thinking it is coming from the well. And she goes on to say, Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? So she knew her stuff, right? But whoever drinks of this water that I shall give him will never thirst. This is Jesus telling her that. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Now for me, that just sounds so refreshing and if you think about it think about a well that is overflowing you know think about that think about a well overflowing on the inside of you um so at this point she is like after you hear all of that she's like well okay i have to get this water if you are telling me that you're giving me water that i will never thirst again then i have to get this water and after a short discourse with her when basically jesus was questioning her we know the line of questioning he asked her well what about your husband and she, say, she says, I have no husband. And he says, you have rightly said. He sort of takes her through a part of repentance. And Jesus saw all that she did and was not faced. You know, if we read lower down in that account, you would see where the disciples were very concerned that Jesus is actually talking to this woman, right? But Jesus was not faced. He was not faced by her past. He was not faced by the things that she did in her life. He wasn't, you know, it didn't affect him in any way. He revealed himself to her 
that he was the Messiah, that he was the Messiah and then this happened. Now picture it, right? Now I know sometimes we read the word or read the Bible or we read whatever and sometimes we don't actually picture it, but I want you to picture it this morning. She went to the well with her bucket like she does probably every day. She met someone that she never met before. Um, in the end it was, it, 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 it turned out that she actually met Jesus, the Messiah, and then this is what happened. The woman then left her water pot and went into the city. The same water pot that she came with to draw water for the day. She left it and went into the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all the things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? She came to draw water, met Jesus, and no longer needed the water that she wanted to draw from. She was overtaken and overwhelmed by the truth that came into her life. She was overwhelmed by Jesus. Now, think about your life. Think about the things that you have gone through. Think about, think about the hurt, everything. I mean, we live in a real world. Not everything is perfect. We all go through our struggles. And sometimes we could be like this woman at the well. You know, you're just going through every day. Every day seems to be mundane. But once you encounter Jesus, and I don't care who you are, I don't care where you are, even whatever time that you're listening, know that Jesus loves you. And if you are hearing this, he is at that well. He is at that well meeting with you and, and is telling you that, hey, I am the living water that you need. When you come to me, you will never thirst. You will never, he is the well that runs dry. I know we all know that saying, right? Jesus is the well that never runs dry. When you think about it, that's like a miracle well, right? Because all wells get their water from somewhere, but Jesus is saying he is that well. He will satisfy us. He is going to just meet our every single need. And I am not talking here just from my notes or from the Bible. This is, this is what I live. This, you know, I, I love Jesus so much and I know that you all love him too. Um, even sometimes when you feel, you know, sometimes we could feel that we're far away from God. But let me tell you a secret. A secret. You're never far, as far away from God as you think. God is always there, even in the midst of your hurt, even in the midst of your wrongdoing, even when you don't understand, God is always there and He will always be there. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. That's a promise that He has given to you. And even when you're going through the struggles and the trials, He is right there with you. So I just wanted to encourage you um, by saying that. And He's also crazy in love. I don't know about anybody who is so crazy in love with us on, on, a, on, on a reel. I mean, He came for us, He died for us. He took our place on that cross so that we could live lives that are abundant, so that we could live lives that are free from sin, free from hurt, free from anger, and all the things that we would have gone through before. In Christ, we have a new life. And this is the encounter that this woman by the well had. She had an encounter with Jesus. She had an encounter with living water. And I want you to also have an encounter this morning. Listen, we sometimes I think we put God in a box. We kind of think, well, you know, we, we put boundaries on what we think God will do in our lives. But let me tell you something. God wants to blow your mind. He wants to blow those boundaries. He wants to do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask of Him, more than you could ever think of. And He wants to do that in your life. He wants, and, and there's no reason why we cannot have an encounter every day with the Lord. So you're with us this morning. You might be thinking, well, today is uh, the same like every other day. I'll get my stuff ready. I'll face the traffic. I'll go to work. But today you could encounter Jesus. And even right now, you're feeling his presence. He's there with you. He's there with you in your room. He's there with you in your car. He's there with you in everything that you, that you are doing. You can encounter Jesus this morning. In John 3, 37, it says, 
On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood out and cried, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers. Remember what I was talking about before? Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And this is one of my favorite verses. It's in Psalm, that as the deer pants, think about a deer in the forest, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet? Where can I go and meet with God? So on the inside of us, there's a river. We have living waters when we spend time with God. And now I just want you to just take a moment, stop whatever you're doing. If you're driving, don't stop doing that. <laughs> but if you're getting things ready, just take a moment because we are just going to invite the presence of God. I want your life to be filled with God's presence. I want you to feel that when you face this day, that you know that you are not going through it alone, but that God is with you. Yeah, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, for all that you have done for us, Lord. You are such a loving God, a caring God. You have given us rivers of living waters that we will never have to thirst again or hunger again. But Lord, you have satisfied our every single need. So we surrender our hearts to you. We surrender our lives to you, our minds to you. Everything that we have, Lord, we just give it to you and we invite you in. Right now, lift your hands wherever you are. And Lord, we just invite you into our day. We want you to be with us as we face this day. We want your presence to be with us. We want to feel your presence. We want to feel your love. We want to know that in us is a, is a well of living water that is just overflowing. And we thank you for love and joy and peace. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, Lord. We put everything before you, all our cares, all our anxieties, all our concerns. We just put it before you, Lord, and we just say that we receive your love this morning. We receive you in everything, Father. And Lord, I just want to thank you for our nation. I want to thank you for the people of Trinidad and Tobago, everyone that is listening. I declare the peace of God over everyone. I declare that love will be our portion, that we will walk in love. I come against every plan of the enemy to obstruct our way, but I declare that the plans and the purposes of God will be realized in our lives. I thank you for victory, for health, for strength, and I thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen.